everybody welcome back to more sexy kitchen how are you all doing today great i hope you had a wonderful week a wonderful day and how's it going in general i hope great thank you for subscribing thank you for liking my video thank you for the comments thank you for clicking the notification button and so you can get every notification when I post. Thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to keep coming. Please put your comment down. Let me know what you think. Anything you want us to discuss, please let us know. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the last video with I am Michelle and it's just Lola. Oh, it was a great um, segment with them. I enjoyed myself. It was a funny and educative one so welcome back so today i don't have any guests it's me myself and i and one of my sisters requests that i make this video of how i make this stew so i'm going to be making it so this um stew is particular to nigerians um to yoruba tribe to be precise um nigeria is west africa and yoruba um, one of the tribes in nigeria so the Stew I'm going to be making today is called Ayamashe. Some people call it designer stew. Some people say um, Ofada stew. Some people call it rice stew. Anyone you want to call it. That's what I'll be making today. And we're going to be listening to it. But before I go into that, topic for today is depression. And the reason why I chose this topic today is because I feel like Africans, um, not the gen newer generation. I don't think the newer generation are shying away from it. But the older generation, we I tend to see and notice that we shy away from this topic. It, these are topics we sweep under the carpet. Even for those that are educated, this is not even about being uneducated. For those that are fully educated, for those that are in the United States, and for those that are back home, we still shy away from this topic. We still see or feel like it's abdominal to talk about it or it's not real so i'm going to be talking about it i'm going to be going into a little detail of what i know remember i am not a psychologist it's something that i have learned from experience from things i've seen in my society and from my research so please um let's just learn together if you have one or two comments you let me know and you know you can all learn and if you are an expert at this topic you would like to be in my kitchen so we can discuss it more I'll, you're definitely welcome to come in so we can discuss it and also yes most definitely i will be having a psychologist coming in one of my um segment and to talk to us for this cooking i'm going to be using bell pepper which is the green bell pepper some people use the red one but i prefer using the green bell pepper for this for my cooking for when i cook this too for my family um the habanero pepper you can use the red yellow or green habanero pepper anyone you want i use the red one because it's more spicy so i use to make it more spicy we need onions um we need egg when i put shrimp in my i just love shrimp so i put shrimp in pretty much everything i eat so i put shrimp sometime in my i put dry um fish i also use meat goat meat try any kind of meat so people do do use fish turkey anything you want to put in there but when i do um get my meat i cut it into small chunks as you can see in the picture there are little bites of um meat so i have the goat meat i have the tripe in it so yes that's what we're going to be using i am going to also be using my locust beans which um my tribe called iru it's the locust bean we're going to be using palm oil we're going to be using um, seasoning cube, maggi, and salt for today's cooking. So I hope you're ready. Let's get cooking and get this discussion rolling. Yay! So I already washed my hands. Paper towel. So I'm just going to blend the pepper, which is green, habanero, and the onion. I always try to put as little water as possible. I don't want um, to put too much water. So as tiny little as possible you don't want to put too much water in it so that's what we are going to do right now because I'm trying to put less water in it that's why I'm just using this to push it down if um you have to put water because your blender cannot um do it with less water you can just go ahead and put, um, put water in it as needed 
and <clears throat> you can cook it for a while and sieve the water out of the pepper. When you do blend it, do not make it blend all the way. You want, you want it to be a little chunky, not super, super chunky, just a little, you know? Okay, so now that I'm done blending the pepper, I will be pouring it in a separate pot and I'll let it cook for a little bit. I just do, that's how I normally do mine, I let it cook for a while. So when it's going into the regular pot that I'm using, doesn't take a while to cook. But I'm going to pour it into my pan, my pot right here, and I'm going to let it cook for a little while, just for a few minutes. So while my pepper is on the stove boiling, I'm going to need to bleach my oil. But before I do that, we're going to go right into, jump right into our discussion about depression. So I got my definition from NIH, National Institute of Mental Health. That's where I got my definition from. So shooting kids, you're like, what the hell did you get your definition from? So, says depression is a common but serious mood disorder. It can cause severe symptoms that affect how you feel think and undo your daily activities. We already know that it's some kind of disorder. Some people think it is not serious, it's a mere thing, but it can be very severe, it can be very, very serious. It depends on how it's affecting your daily activities and how you're handling it. We're gonna talk about the type of different depression or, you know. So we have the persistent depression. Uh, persistent depression is a depression um, and a, a mood that lasts longer than two years. So it has to be diagnosed by a uh, psychologist, a therapy or something like that, or your doctor. Um, this symptom or whatever is going on with you have to last longer than two years. So they know it's persistent, it's still, yeah, you're depressed, it's still going on. Um, so people have it for a long time and things like that. So we also have the postpartum depression, uh, which we know with mothers, women that are pregnant, that just had their baby, they either go through it while they're pregnant or is lasting after they're pregnant. They something also called the baby blue. The baby blue is something that lasts for two weeks after you give birth to your child. Like you don't feel like taking care of the child, taking care of yourself. You're, you're having mood soon. You're not really happy after your childbirth or during your pregnancy. Baby blue can um, can last for about two weeks, but postpartum can last for a very long time. So it's two different things. Baby blue is just like a phase that you're going through at that moment, and you're able to get right out of it after two weeks but postpartum is something that lasts for a while a very long time some people it got it, it has gotten to a point that whatever they might have gone through after that having that child some people just lose connection with that child they don't want to have anything to do with that child anymore some people were able to get out of it so, so something like that so we also have the um, psychotic depression so which occurs when a person has severe depression from psychiatric issues maybe um, we can talk about hallucination where you're seeing things that are not actually there you're having some kind of weird feeling that is not really it's not real you're seeing things you're seeing things that are not there you're seeing things that I can see or I'm seeing things that you can see like sometimes this um, hallucination comes from guilt um, and things like that so that's how that happens and also seasonal um, depression Seasonal depression are depressions that occur in a particular season and the research has been done by NIH that this happens mostly in the winter time. Like people get out of this seasonal depression when it's like spring and summertime but during the winter they go through the depression which will be like there's not much you know during the winter it's always dark and there's not much color, no much excitement going on so people feel down and things are not going they, they're, they're not, they're anti-social there's not, not much to do during the winter so it kind of like starts to sit or start, people start to feel it now also the bipolar dis um, disorder the bipolar disorder we might say that it does not, it does not go under depression but the symptom, the things people go through being bipolar does for under depression too. They get mood swing, they're not happy, you know, there's some things like they, they feel bad and things like that about themselves. So things like that fall under depression. Now that we have spoken about different type of depression, there's more to it, not just, but those are the general things that you can see. Now that we have spoken about this depression and this disorder, why do Africans shy away from it? Why do we think this like things like this don't exist? Why? Why do our community shy away from it? Our church, our mosques, 
uh, social gathering, uh, you know, why do we shy away from this? Why do we think this is not something that is normal? And I have seen that some of us, not just do we think that it does not happen, but some of us categorize it more that it is spiritual, rather than it can be physical and it can be something that's just mental that has nothing to do with being spiritual. I have had this discussion with my Christian brothers and sisters. I am a Christian, let's be precise, and nothing religious about this. So, I have discussed with my brothers and sisters, which are Christians and Muslims, and um, we have tried to understand is that why do we always tag this as spiritual? Why can't we just do like this chemical imbalance in our body that is causing all this to happen to us? And we have, you know, it's just, it, it's just, it is what it is. We, so we will continue to have this spiritual mentality, which it can be spiritual, don't get me wrong, for those that are, have spiritual background, but... It can be chemical imbalance in our body too. So it's something that we should, we need to stop shying away from. When you notice somebody is unhappy, always unhappy, or have there's things going on with them during this time in their life, it's our responsibility as fellow human brothers and sisters to talk to one another, not to judge. It's very hard not to judge. I can, I can definitely tell you that. It's very hard not to tell somebody that, oh, this is what you need to do. Let's take, for example, road anxiety. So, um, you tell people about road anxiety and typical African, like, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. Just get behind the wheel and start driving. Or even somebody, not even, let's not make this even, um, um, African. We have seen Americans or somebody outside of being American that thinks that, oh, just get behind the wheel and you're just, just, just going to be fine. And we don't believe that this can be something really, really serious. This is something really serious that have led to um, greater things or uh, 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 things that are greater than what we thought it was going to be. Things that are worse than what we thought it was going to be. People committing suicide, doing things that we would have, wouldn't have thought they would do. So let me pause on that note and let's get to the cooking. Let's go back to the cooking. So now that um, my pepper and boiled for a little bit. We got thicker chunks up here. It's chunky. Now work free. I'm just going to let it continue cooking. While it is cooking, I am going to add my locust beans to it while it's cooking. The fish is really dry, so I'm also going to add it to it. The reason why I'm adding the dry fish to it is so that the dry fish can get a little soft because it's really dry. So I'm giving it time to cook so it gets soft. Let me just stir it together. So it's cooking right there. So right now I am going to go ahead and I'm going to turn on my stove. To um, bleach my oil, the palm oil, the red oil. The palm oil. So we're going to bleach it. So while the oil is bleaching, um, this is my egg that I boiled because I want the seasoning and the pepper to get inside the egg. This is what I do. I take my egg and I take my fork and I punch like you know just dig the fork into the egg so it's like it puts like some kind of hole in it so the pepper and the oil can penetrate into the egg you know so it can be juicy inside so juicy 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 so the oil is bleached already for the pepper that I cooked if you can as you can see this is ready so I'm just going to add it because the thing is the oil is based so it's gonna make so much noise. So I'm just gonna add into it. So now I've added the pepper to the um hot oil and it's cooking. So I'm just gonna give it like about Two minutes just cooked together um, this is not going to take long due to the fact that I already boiled the 
pepper earlier. I already cooked it in a separate pot. So it's not going to take long at all. It's going to be a very fast process. Now go back to uh, going back to our discussion. Um, we as human need to um, stop shying away from this um, discussion. We can find this symptom and things in not just adults, in kids. Don't just, um, when your child tells you about something, don't just put them aside and tell them, oh, um, this is how you can do with it. Pray about it. Don't just tell them to pray about it. Yes, prayer, awesome. Pray about it, but also seek other assistance that they need. Talk to them. Let them speak out about it. Let them be comfortable to talk to you about whatever they might be going through. And if they're not comfortable to talk to you about whatever they might be going through, refer them to somebody that can help them. If you don't um, trust a mentor or anything, refer them to somebody that is a professional, a psychologist or anything like that, so they can help them um, to conquer it before it gets worse. Um, some of these things, if it's handled early and fast, it can be avoided. So please, please, please. And now, I was also, it was talking about the um, symptom and signs of depression. So they have the persistent sadness, anxious or empty mood. Feeling of hopelessness, uh, feeling irritated, feeling of guilt, worthlessness, or helplessness. Like you feel like you're helpless, nobody. Loss of interest or pleasure in hobbies and activities. Kids that you know always love to go out before, and all of a sudden they don't want to. You don't. They just want to stay in their shell. They don't want to do anything. Um, decreased energy or fatigue, moving or talking more slowly, feeling restless or having troubles sitting still. Difficulty concentrating, remembering, or making decision. Difficulty sleeping, early morning awakening, and or oversleeping. It's too much. They always say too much of everything is bad. So you're sleeping too much is bad. You're not sleeping is bad. So appetite or weight change. You know, some people do drastic weight changes. All of a sudden they lose weight, or all of a sudden they gain weight. Please. Headache or pain, um, cramps, and things like that. And always remember. This thing varies. They have different um, thing or going on with everybody. We, our body is different. Our system is different. I might be going through depression, and all I want to do is um, sit in my own corner. Whereby somebody's symptom is totally different. So let us um, always try to pay attention. And also, like I said, don't shy away from it. It's very important. And if you're going through it, please, please, please try to get help. Look for somebody to talk to. And I hope everything does feel better and you get better as soon as possible. So on that note, let's go back to what we're cooking. So remember, I already kind of like boiled the pepper from the start. So it's not going to take too long for it to be cooked and ready. So now, I'm going to add my meat into it. I already told you the type of meat I have. I have tri, which is shaki. And I also have goat meat. That's what I'm putting in it. So for this, people eat this with white rice. I have seen somebody that I know that just likes to put it on a plate and just eat it by itself. I don't know how someone can just sit down and start drinking or licking stew by itself, but people do that. But mostly what people eat it with is white rice. You see some people eat jello fries and put it on it. You see some people eat spaghetti and put it on it. Your choice, but that's what I normally used to eat it, which is um white rice. And now I'm going to put my season. My maggi. And I'm going to add my salt. Simmer, cook together. No, just gonna give it a few minutes for that to happen. I will go back to our discussion. Yes. So yeah. So don't shy away from it. Talk about it. Talk to somebody. See somebody. These things have broken family, broken um, young adult, broken adult. We think they can just deal with it without anybody's help. 
And some people can deal with it without anybody's help. You're able to get over it without anybody's help. And always remember, you, although it looks like you found a solution to it, there have been instances where these things come back um, after a while, they come back again, and things like that. This are considered as disorder, it's considered as disease or sickness. So please, 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 don't think people that tell you they're going through this are just joking. Don't make fun of them. Listen to them. Don't just put them aside that they're not useful or anything like that. They're just going through one. It's like you having a headache or you going through one sickness or the other. And somebody just saying, oh, if you do this, you'll get over it. It doesn't always work like that. So please, please, please seek help and find it. And my advice to our society in general, church, marks, um, gathering, I don't know, whatever other place of worship or other society or whatever thing you belong to that you're, um, you have a group of people gathered together, please create um, time and attention to this discussion and please don't shy away from it. Churches, have classes for these people. Have psychologists to help these people. Although people might not open up to you but if you do have seminar and things for this and you discuss it marks social gathering you have seminar and things to discuss this topic it will really really help the community so thank you so much i really appreciate it and i hope you learn one or two things from this topic now let's do all focus on the cooking now okay now all right i'm just going to give it a few minutes so it can uh, cook up together you know come together while that is done, I am going to, um, because my shrimp, you know, shrimp cook really fast. I just want to put a little bit of shrimp in it. Just a little. It's not mandatory. Please remember, it's not mandatory. I just like it. It's just, uh, it's just one of my addiction. Please, don't forget to subscribe, like, put your comment, click the notification button. And don't forget to share with your friends. Everybody can learn one thing or the other. It's not just about the cooking. It's also about the discussion. Please, 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 and thank you all so much. I really, really appreciate it for liking, for subscribing, for sharing with your friends. And thank you so much. And I hope you're learning from this. Please, 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 if you have any discussion you think we're shying away from, we don't want to talk about let me know. I'll talk about it. Okay, all right. Let's just give this a few minutes to simmer, and I'll be right back. So now that it is boiling, and I let it boil for about 10 minutes together, so I'm just going to add my egg on it. for about a minute to two minutes more actually five minutes so and we're just gonna turn it off and it's ready okay now that you have seen how it, it is done this is ayamashe designer stew rice white rice stew however you call it now my rice is ready and i'm just gonna show you how i serve it with my white rice sometimes i put fried plantain beside it so after i serve it i serve it with fried plantain and it tastes really good. If you don't have plantain, that's fine. I really like it. And sometimes I also eat it with roasted plantain. I don't know why, but I just like it. And that's it. So, so uh, yeah, I'll be right back to show you how it looks beside the white rice. So I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. So this is the end result. So we have the white rice. We have the design stew. Remember, we have egg, shrimp, um, tripe, goat meat, dry fish yeah so i'm ready to taste it ready for the tasting well tastes good not too spicy the dry fish is soft now not extremely so. The meat, good texture. Now, I want to show you how I always love the egg to look. Hopefully, you got it. But it's not fully in here. My spice is not fully in here. But as time goes on, if it smells like days, a day or by tomorrow, you should be able to see it. No. Oh, yes. I can taste it. It's a, yeah. It does not taste like regular eating boiled egg the seasoning is already in the end thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe click the like button hit the notification button 
if you want to get a notification as soon as I post videos. And don't forget to comment. Thank you so much for today's discussion. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I love you all. See you again next time. Bye-bye. Peace.